All right, uh, we'll kick it off this morning. I would like to uh, welcome everyone to today's sales enablement training. Uh, I'm excited today, we're gonna be talking about our customer reference program, uh, some recent updates and uh, a lot of information there. Uh, as a reminder, we uh, are recording this session and we will be posting it live on YouTube. Uh, so we would love this to be a two-way conversation uh, where we get lots of questions in chat and we'll, we'll do some Q&A at the end. Uh, but please um, keep in mind that it's a, it, it will be a public training and so we want to keep uh, things that are confidential confidential. Uh, with that, I will share my screen and I do have some slides that are linked in the, uh, in the meeting invite. Uh, so just to kick us off, uh, I wanted to talk about some, uh, some customer anecdotes and we've recently been capturing these. Uh, and in fact, even as I'm, I'm sharing this slide, an even better view of this would be this uh, merge request I just made right here uh, to the handbook. So I've just added a bunch of uh, customer anecdotes. So think of a customer anecdote as a short customer story. You could use these on a customer call. Uh, recently, uh, Vivian and I had, a, had one of our partners, they wanted um, to know, you know what are some of our case studies, but they didn't want to read the whole case study, they wanted a synopsis. This is, a, this is a great opportunity when you need anything like that. You could use a customer anecdote. Um, and so, and you can use them in different ways. So one anecdote that we have, it's a great little story, is uh, one of our customers, and I think uh, some of you have heard this story before, uh, this is a non-referenceable customer. So if you share the story, keep in mind to uh, keep the, the customer anonymous uh, until we of course get uh, permission uh, which we're seeking, but today we don't have that to keep them around us. The, the idea is, uh, you know, we had a large, uh, large customer, a large enterprise in the software space. Uh, they're a GitLab premium customer and they are, were looking to replace Perforce. Uh, and they predicted that it would take them three years to hit 6,000 active users. But because the developer experience on GitLab is so superior, they actually ended up hitting 6,000 users in only eight months. So this is a great customer story you can share in a few different instances. So for example, if uh, you're talking with someone and they happen to be a Perforce user, um, and you could say, you know, how does Perforce compare to GitLab? Well, you know, one anecdote we know is that we had this one customer and uh, they wanted to bring 6,000 6, users on the GitLab. They thought it would take them three years to make that migration, but they achieved it in only eight months um, because they were able to move to GitLab so quickly and GitLab was so superior. So uh, that's one way to use the anecdote. Another way might be uh, when you're talking to any customer and often, uh, especially IT, uh, IT folks that um, a concern for them might be, uh, hey, it's, uh, it's very difficult me, for me to drive tool adoption and I'm hesitant to adopt new tools uh, because then I have to get everybody in the org to go and adopt it. You can say, oh, well, you know, customers tend to adopt GitLab very, very quickly. In fact, we have one customer, they wanted to take three years to get on 6,000 users, but they actually ended up hitting it after only eight months. So from that perspective, that's uh, a few anecdotes that I just wanted to share. And what I'd really like to do is pass it over to Kim, who is running our customer reference program and have her tell you a bit more about it. Hi guys. So um, customers don't want to hear from us. They want to hear from their others. Um, from other people in the world. How often when you are looking for a new restaurant to try, you're in a new town, do you look at Yelp? What about when you're looking at a hotel, you look at TripAdvisor or Yelp. Um, if you're looking for a new job, get a glass door. The power of customer references is immeasurable. It, it, everybody is so powerful when they're listening to others. And GitLab can utilize this same crowdsource feedback with our customer reference program, the whole goal being to show them that other customers are the hero and we help enable them. Next slide. So we have a multiple type, or we have multiple types of references that we can use. Some are formal, some are informal. The formal include the case studies, like what we have on our current website, um, presentations and events at conferences, speaking with analysts for reports. We need to make sure we're tracking this and that we're presenting the best customers to speak with analysts. Um, 
Speaking with other customers on our behalf, we need to make sure we're tracking that as well as videos. Now, what William just shared, where we've got the informal, that's a little different. Those are more of the snackable stories that you can reach into. Um, I don't need, we don't need to necessarily track that, but we want to make sure that we're building a repository so that you can use that information as needed. Um, like I mentioned, it's snackable stories, like what William just mentioned, along with unattributed customer quotes. So even if we have customers that aren't referenceable, we can anonymize their story, we can anonymize their quotes, and make it so that we can share that story publicly. Um, next slide. Yeah, and Kim, I'll, I'll just chime in for a moment. I know you and I had this conversation about how there's a lot of tribal knowledge. You're yes. telling me like, oh, our sales team has all this tribal knowledge. And so I think internally, we share these stories all the time. Um, or we might even talk to one of our new customers about one of our other customers. Uh, but we're the only one that knows that story or the person you share it with is the only one that knows it. So if you share it with Kim, you know, uh, or we add it to the handbook, that way uh, more folks can get those snackable stories. Right. And that's, that's what we want to make sure we're capturing are those, the, the stories that everybody knows, but it's not written down. And so that's part of what I want to make sure that we're accomplishing with the customer reference program is that we have a point where we can point people to where's that tribal knowledge, where are those stories so that everybody can use them because it's not just the sales team that needs this information. Think about how we can use that with partners and resellers as well. So here are some of the examples outside of what you would typically think for a customer reference. So here we have the oblong quote that's currently used on one of our product pages. It's a simple three sentence quote, but the power that it brings to that page is amazing. It helps boost and it helps give credibility to our page. And so we need to make sure that we're capturing this, that we, it doesn't just stay as tribal knowledge, that we've got it documented, that we've got it written down so that we can share it widely among the company. Next slide. Another reference um, here's pulled from a case study. As we know, um, we're building up our case, our case study repository. We need the information, we need those stories. So as we hear Ama customers that are doing amazing work with GitLab that GitLab is enabling them. We want to make sure we're capturing that and sharing it with more widely with the world. Next slide. This is actually, I saw this in a magazine just the other day and I thought, you know what, this is great for something that we're trying to do here. It's just simply this man saying, they said I'd never walk again. I said, want to bet. And it's saying how after an accident, he, he was paralyzed from the eyeballs down. And then he fought back with the help of this health institution. We can do the same thing. This is the power of a quote. This is the power of not just simply a case study, but something more. Next slide. Yeah, that is the Empire Lounge. Good job, Mark. This is a Colorado magazine. It's also important to track references. Um, that's why this, this program is so vital. We want to make sure that we are reaching out to a wide variety, getting a lot of stories. We don't want to hit and share the same five stories. We want to make sure that we are building credibility in the market by instead of sharing the same five stories, we're sharing 15, 20, 25, the list grows. It also makes sure that we're not overusing a reference, that we're not potentially making somebody upset by how often they're having to talk with a customer or an analyst. Um, we have an example right now with a customer who we want to make sure we're not overusing that connection. And so we want to make sure we're tracking that and that we have it in market of, okay, they said they would speak to somebody once or twice a quarter. They've already hit their quota for this quarter. What's the next step? Who else can we look to? Where else can we go for somebody to make this, this need that we have? Um, and I, I'll chime in for just a sec as well, Kim, just to affirm that. Uh, I know today a lot of folks will use a customer that they know well as a reference for one of their other customers. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you, you're possibly doing this today. Somebody's like, oh, can I, can I get a reference? And you just send them to one of your own customers. Um, but what we're asking here is that you loop Kim into that process, even if they're both your customers and you have that relationship. And the reason why is, A, so that she can track it and make sure that that same customer doesn't get pinged a thousand times and then B, so that she's aware that that customer may be willing to do this sort of thing. Um, and we can, we can have that in a centralized place. Right. We want to make sure that we, we're open and that we understand where people are, who people are talking to, what people are talking. And it helps with that story. 
make sure it's being shared properly. Yeah, just to reinforce this, this is a sheesh. You always, always want to make sure that the sales representative or the sales account manager is always in the loop because they own the primary relationship. Exactly. So if you need a reference for anything, you know, you want to make sure both the two people in, in touch always. One is Kim and one is, you know, the appropriate sales executive or sales representative associated with that account. It's really important. Exactly. Good, Kim. Okay. William, I believe this is where either you or JJ are sharing. Uh, yeah, so uh, one of the things, uh, so we're talking a lot about uh, what we want this to look like long term. Uh, so another element to this program would be, ideally we'd be able to go into Salesforce and run a report to ask the question, who is referenceable? Uh, which we're building towards that process. So. What I'm going to do is, uh, JJ, did you make it onto our uh, call this morning? Yep, I'm here. Awesome. Then what I'll do is I'll stop sharing and I will, uh, I'll pass it over to you to talk about our new updates in uh, Salesforce uh, for folks that are using Salesforce. Sure. Okay. So in Salesforce, um, there's a couple different fields that are now new, both on the account object and the opportunity object. So, uh, on the opportunity object, hold on, I've got way too many controls. Slow down, slow down. Um, so on the opportunity object, there is now a pick list that is yes, no, or unknown. Starting on Monday, uh, that field is actually going to be required if you're going to be moving somebody from stage five to stage six. Um, so it, it, I mean, it will stop you. It, you'll get an error message saying you haven't answered this question. Um, the field is right here on the right side. Um, it just says yes, yes, no, or unknown. Um, when you check this box, um, you also need to go to the account object and then update the fields that are both on the slide. And then um, I can jump into an account here. Um, and so the referenceable customer stuff is right here. Um, it's about two scrolls down. Um, so again, when you're editing an account record, you're gonna answer the same question, the yes, no, or unknown. Right now they're not hooked together, the two questions, um, because uh, we couldn't have that field dependency without one being required. Um, and so internet's super slow. Maybe it'll update. Thank you. Um, so anyway, the, the fields that you're going to be seeing is uh, like a customer reference note section. Like that's where you can put your customer anecdote or if there is something that you want to remember to talk to Kim about, you can put those in the customer note section. Um, I scrolled right by it. Yeah. So here's the same question. Yes, no, or unknown. So just answer it the same way. Uh, re customer reference notes. These are customer story, like notes that you want to take uh, to remember to talk uh, to Kim about. Uh, future plans, like if you know what their future plans are, um, Kim or William will cover these specifically, but these are like special interest groups or an advisory board. Um, so membership into those, if, if there are different um, criteria for those. But then over here on the right side is the ones that you're actually wanting to do. Logo means that we can use their logo on the website or the deck. If they give us, like we can ask them for a quote, do a case study, be an event webcast speaker. Those are sort of self-explanatory. And then a sales and analyst reference. And then also if they're willing to do a testimonial for us, like the testimonial could be like a blog post or it could be um, a video testimonial or just a written testimonial. Um, so these are just check boxes. You can just go through and check them. Um, and then you save the record, the account record. And so then these fields will actually be mapped into a report. There is an existing customer reference report that uses this section. Um, it's going to be updated to include these fields. And so then we can have one central location for all this information to live. Um, and so, yeah, like I said, the process is on the op, you check the box, like you pick, do the pick list, and then you make sure that you update the account as well. And then, uh, Kim, if you need help, she'll be your resource. Um, and that is about it. And it is documented in the handbook. Um, we have updated it. It's in the business opportunity section, um, under stage five, it'll explain, uh, the same thing that's written here on the slide.
And then I guess I will hand it back to William. Yeah, I can uh, share again. And we have uh, a few more slides. Gave the uh, demo. Uh, so what's coming up next? Uh, Kim, can you kind of share with us uh, what, what we have going forward? Sure. So this week, we are starting the process of nominations for our customer advisory board. And if you can go to the next slide, this is in the handbook, but it describes what the customer advisory board is. It's um, more of our, we're looking for our enterprise level customers at this point for the cab. We are trying to meet virtually every six to eight weeks. We're anticipating our first virtual meeting to be in August, mid-August, hopefully before the summit. And we're also hoping to have an in-person meeting October, wait more details on that. Um, the customer advisory board is the opportunity for customers to speak with each other, to share their insights, to share what they're learning, and then we can learn from them. They can talk with each other, we're there. It's, it's an amazing opportunity for them to, to share um, and to hear from us. Um, we also, we intend to live stream the meetings, um, and so we'll make sure that everything is anonymized in the meeting. Um, we also have the nomination letter can be found here um, in this issue down below. Um, next slide. And then I see that there are a couple of questions in the chat. It, yeah, it looks like we're to questions. Uh, one thing that I thought would be good to clarify, and I know uh, JJ and Kim and I had a lot of discussion around that, uh, around this. Erica was in this discussion as well. Um, so the Salesforce report, will be a formal record of when we have permission for something. So the customer's given us permission for a quote or given us permission for a case study. That doesn't necessarily mean we have a case study. Uh, that This is a report that like Kim or product marketing would run to say, um, out of all of our customers, who's willing to do a case study? So then we can look and say, okay, we need a case study for IT. Uh, or we need a case study for um, this specific vertical. This is a way for us to run the report so that we can figure out who's willing to do that. Uh, of course, there will be another report that everybody will use that will be, um, what's the list of all the logos I can use? Where's that? Or what's the list of all the case studies? So that's in the works and coming down the pipe. Uh, one of them is about .gitlab dot com slash customers. So this is the formal repository of all of our case studies. And as we ship new case studies, this gets updated live. So I saw that Elsha asked this question, but I wanted to, uh, you know, bring it to the whole group into YouTube that, um, yes, as we, uh, case studies, um, are, are formal and polished, uh, but of course they take a lot of time to, uh, to get through, but we do have several case studies in the hopper. Uh, and I don't know if Kim or Erica is on and wants to talk about maybe some of the, well, I guess we can't talk about the ones publicly that are not yet formally approved, but uh, rest assured, we do have uh, more case studies coming down the pipe. And as soon as they're approved, uh, they will be published here uh, on our customers page. Um, and in addition to the, uh, the product marketing handbook where uh, there's information about everything we're chatting about today, but also the, uh, you know, the anecdotes. So those are some places you can go today to get resources today. And then there is more coming down the pipe um, with RO Innovation. Kim, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit just about RO Innovation. It is a software tool that will help plug into our Salesforce to help make everything easier, a more referenceable library for all of this information. So once so we have that pain points, yeah. Yeah, once we have that plugin, then we'll be able to pull a Salesforce report such as um, list for me all of the customer quotes we have on file related to CICD. Like I need a I need a customer quote about CICD. We that's that's coming down the road. Let's see, there's a, there's a lot of questions. I don't know if uh, Kim or JJ, you wanna jump in and... Um, what does a sample agenda look like for the virtual meetings?
for the cab. I will um, link that in the agenda here, but essentially it's um, have a customer or two share their story. We might have a thought leader join um, just so that they can start the conversation and be speaking with each other. I believe Ashish also wants to add. Yeah, so typically uh, when we have a virtual meeting for the customer advisory board, we will publish the agenda well in advance because it's not possible for that person, you know, let's say they're from a bank, uh, an executive from a bank who's on our cab to attend every single meeting, right? If we do that, for example, every month. So we'll have a process in place where they know the agenda, they kind of know what discussion points are coming and be able to send in the appropriate person or bring in an appropriate person from their team if there are very specific things that they want to talk about. This agenda will be defined jointly by GitLab and the customer advisory board attendees. So, you know, part of the ongoing um, uh, discussion will be what topics are more, more interesting to you? What, what problems are you trying to solve? And, you know, it's a peer-to-peer -peer interaction between themselves as well. So these agenda items will vary. But an example could be, you know, how do I bring my um, development and security teams together? I'm really struggling, right? Or I'm having a real cultural problem with bringing the dev and ops teams together. Yes, they all agree in theory, but they're practical um, challenges because the teams are distributed. And so we might have another cab member kind of speak to how they're doing this today and share those best practices with the rest of the attendees and, and then have them then lead the discussion on what's the best practice in their area. And, and so these sessions tend to build on themselves once the topics are identified by the cab members themselves. The agenda will vary. We have some placeholders, but we'll see you know, how it evolves. And hopefully that answers the question. I see uh, another question in here from, from David, uh, just about will there be a way to quickly search uh, for what are all the customer quotes, say, for banking stories? Uh, and just to reiterate, historically, uh, our tracking of this has been tribal knowledge and sharing one-to-one -one and not captured in one place. So the start to get to that repository of being able to search is noting all of his data in Salesforce that as, as a uh, JJ showed. So if everybody uh, starts doing that, that that will allow us to get to this to get to this place. So that's the next step in the journey. Um, I want to add on that if people are putting like the customer knowledge in the referenceable notes section, um, the report that is in Salesforce can have an industry column on it. And so then you can search that way. But right now, since there's nothing in the customer notes section, it's not going to be helpful. So yeah, if we start putting everything in Salesforce, you could have that information. Yeah, and, and then as we implement our own innovation, et cetera, uh, we'll keep progressing down that path. Uh, that's, that's the vision, David. Uh, it looks like we also have a question here from John. Do we want customer nominations for the cab in that issue? Uh, and the answer is yes, please do go to that issue uh, for nominations. Uh, looks like, are there any prerequisites uh, for the nomination? Paul would like to know. Uh, for example, do they need to be a senior leader on the account or can it be a senior developer? Um, I don't know if Kim or uh, Ashish, you want to talk about uh, prerequisites for, for being nominated for the CAB? Yeah, hi, William. I have answered here. Um, I think we need the nominations. The way this process will work is we're expecting a lot more nominations. Then we will have seats on there and we'll have a selected select, selection criteria. The idea here is um, we didn't talk about it in this meeting, but we will have a customer advisory board, which is the cab we're talking about, as well as a special um, a number of special interest groups, six. So the idea of the special interest groups is to actually have those along the lines of the different areas which our solution provides help to our customers. So it could be around you know, portfolio um, planning, uh, PPM, right? Portfolio and project planning. Um, it could be along you know, security. It could be along testing. So we're gonna have specific areas that kind of map to the different um, you know, problems we solve for our customers using our solution. The cab is supposed to be 
uh, more horizontal, if I might use that word. And the idea there being, you know, if you're driving an initiative in, inside of your company and you're looking to solve problems across, how can we kind of help you get connected to your peers? How, you know, what is the decision driving criteria? How are you, you know, kind of coping with that? What are the best practices? How can you share that with your peers? How can we help you? And, and part of that, you know, the SIGs and the CAB, the intention is for us to partner and understand, you know, how can we help them better by designing our product to solve their problems. So it's a, it's a two-way interaction, right, between the peers, but also between GitLab and the members of the SIGs or the CAPS. So the decision criteria, you know, short answer to who will um, be wa- who will want to be in the CAPS versus who will want to be in the SIGs uh, will get decided on, you know, the persona itself. So that's a decision that, you know, will help drive uh, within the customer reference team. Hey, Ashish, and Kim, it's Mark Bell here. I'm hearing your description of this cab as being much more around uh, collaboration and best practices and process rather than having a serious product focus. And I think that's a missed opportunity. Can you help, uh, help me understand why you want to focus on things other than product in the cab? So the product will definitely be a focus in the cab and the six. I think when it gets down to specific elements and, you know, areas, SIGs will drive more of the capabilities of the product, what's working, what's not working, you know, what would they like to see or how are they using our product innovatively. So that's why we are designing the special interest groups along the product areas. In the cab, we'll also be discussing the product really well, but if you really look at you know all the DevOps transformations out there in large industry, large enterprises, um, just taking it from the perspective of using a tool on how to do a DevOps transformation is usually not how you know enterprises are looking to solve their problems. It's a combination of best practices, the tools that they're using, the processes that they're using. So this cab will automatically you know swivel towards that and pivot towards a combination of you know what I call people, process, and tools. Tools definitely will be an integral part of these discussions in the CAT. And you know, we will discuss how GitLab is helping, what is missing in GitLab, how do we you know, make the product better. But it will not be a 100% focus of the CAB, as you can understand, right? Because these leaders are struggling, not just across tool sets, but how to combine their processes with the tools, with the teams, that are often diverse and you know very siloed. Um, so don't get me wrong. I mean, there will be a lot of tool discussion. There will be a lot of you know how do we make GitLab better for them, or what's missing, and it'll help drive us our direction. But it's not a tool capabilities focus group. It needs to hold value for the for the customers uh, who join us too, right? Yeah, I think just to. To summarize, I think we will be capturing, like a traditional cab, product feedback, but we'll be doing much more than that to drive value for the customers. Uh, With about, we've got one more question, uh, which is, uh, will we be inviting cab members to our GitLab summits? Uh, And so the, the, and of course I'm reading the questions, I know they already have answers in the chat, but I wanna get them on the YouTube video for everybody. Um, And the short answer here is that, Uh, We want to make the summits today. The summit experience is very much GitLab centric. And when we bring customers into that, or especially other folks like core contributors, et cetera, they can feel like outsiders. Um, So we, the vision is that eventually, yes, we do have, when we do our summit, the ability to bring in customers, the ability to bring in uh, open source contributors, that that becomes a broader experience. And we, when we do that, we want to make sure that, that it's inclusive and that those people feel welcomed. So that is part of the vision uh, for the very next summit. Uh, I think there may be um, a few customers we bring in, but that process hasn't been formalized yet. Uh, so with that, I want to thank everyone for uh, joining the call today. And if you have more questions, feel free to drop into the uh, product marketing Slack channel or to, uh, to log an issue. Uh, thanks a lot, everyone.